coming back to school with me We could have done it all so easily Hi, my name is Craig Thompson Wood. I'm the board game teacher. Thanks for coming to my games room. Today I want to do something a little bit different. Uh, I'm not going to be talking about any game in particular. I want to actually talk about something which has made a world of difference in my own life personally and is something that I do with my students and that is goal setting. So you may be wondering why the board game teacher is talking about goal setting. What does this have to do with board games? Well, goal setting can cover a whole wide range of topics, I mean really anything that you want to put your mind to. And so I'm going to maybe encourage you, the viewer, to think about setting goals in your own life, whether it is to go out and play new games and become familiar with some of the games that are out there, thereby making you more aware of the, the games that, that exist and you know maybe some applications you might find for different games in your own classroom or with your own family or in your own life. And the second thing is setting goals to maybe start implementing games into your classroom. Because I find with a lot of teachers that I talk to, they like the idea of board games in the classroom, they recognize the benefits of board games in the classroom, but they're almost reluctant to take some of those first steps into starting to implement them into the classroom. So how do you go about doing that? Well, start setting some goals. So when setting goals, a common acronym that we use is the SMART goals. S-M-A-R-T, which stands for Specific, Measurable, Action Plan, Reasonable, and Time Bound. Let's just, I'm going to go through each of these quickly in the perspective of how you'd use them to implement board games into your classroom. So S stands for Specific, and when you're looking at something specific in terms of implementing board games into your classroom, what you need to be specific about is the game that you're going to implement into your classroom. Which game is it that you'd like to use? Would you like to use paperback to help improve reading? Would you like to use um, City of Zombies to help improve the basic math facts of your students? Would you like to introduce, like say, Cockroach Poker during a probability lesson? There's so many different games that are out there. And as I said before, there really is, with the number of games that exist nowadays, a game that will fit your needs if you just look long enough to find it. So find that specific game that you want to implement into your classroom and that would be the first part of your goal. M is for measurable. And one thing I do with my students, which I think is really important, is that we make our goals visible. So we post them on the wall. And I also insist that anything that they're doing, that is something that they can have little boxes that they check off as they're getting done. So, for example, if they say they're going to read a book in the course of a month, then they have boxes which say they are one quarter done, one half done, three quarters done, and then done. So, like myself, where I say I'm going to do so many YouTube videos in a month, I'll have one box for every video I plan to do. So if you are going to be planning on implementing games into your classroom, you know, maybe if you're, if you're not so ready to just dive right in and do it every day, start into your Daily Five program as a regular thing, or City of Zombies every day, say I'm going to do it twice this week, or I'll do it five times this month. You decide on what you think that you'd be comfortable with and allocate yourself those boxes, which you can then check off as you do. And as I say, keeping that goal posted somewhere public where people can see and you can be, you know, be held more accountable for the goals is a really good idea. It really helps to motivate you to get those goals done because it's always there, it's part of your mind, and it's always on your thoughts. A is for action plan. So looking back at the specific goal, that you, or the specific game that you are wanting to implement into your classroom, then make an action plan on where is it going to fit into your schedule. Just saying that you're going to do it isn't enough. You need to plan on how is it going to integrate within your daily program. So like for myself, paperback is something that I'm using currently in my daily five program. So every day, one of the centers the students go to will be a paperback center. The students have been pre-taught on how to play paperback and now that they know, that can trust them to play on their own, and away they go. And uh, or also like with City of Zombies, I use that as part of my mindful entry. So my action plan to use City of Zombies is to have the students, when they come in first thing in the morning, I have pre-made pre groups with like ability students, and they all sit down and they play City of Zombies as the group. And so every day, different students are playing City of Zombies, and every day different students are playing paperback. 
So that is how I've made my plan to make sure those games are getting played in the classroom. But centers are a great way to implement games into the classroom and is probably one of the ways you should really consider when thinking about the action plan you want to do for your classroom. So R is for reasonable. And reasonable comes down to um, you know your students. It comes down to your comfort level with games. It comes down to your knowledge of games. There's a lot of different factors that play into this one in order to think about what is going to be reasonable for you. And this is one that you have to decide for yourself, but you know, be reasonable with yourself on how much do you think you're going to be able to implement this. If you're already a person who's very familiar with board games and you know you think that you, under, you, know, you know these games already, then implementing them to your classroom should actually be a breeze. But if you're new to board games, if you've never heard of these kinds of games, then maybe taking some time to make yourself more aware of the games would be advised before you go trying to dive into a full-on, everyday kind of program. But however you choose to do it, just make sure that you're doing something that you're going to be comfortable with, because if you pick a goal that's not going to be reasonable for you, it could end up having a negative effect where then it's going to discourage you from continuing using board games in your classroom, and that's just no good. T stands for time bound, and in this you're looking at what time are you going to get these things done. What I recommend and what I use with myself and my students is monthly goals. A month is a nice chunk of time to get a good amount of things done. And you can set monthly goals on how many times you're going to be playing games within the month or how many different games you want to introduce to your classroom in the month. But setting those goals can really help to motivate you to, to get things done because you see it there and you've made the plan and if you're committing to your goals, you're going to start to see these results. What I would then recommend as well, if you're planning on saying doing 10 plays of board games in the classroom in a month, then break that down into weekly goals as well, where every week you're looking at how many times do you need to play this week in order to stay in line with your goals. Doing the monthly goals broken down into weekly goals really helps to focus you and help you to be successful. Well, that's going to wrap it up for today's episode. If you have any questions about goal setting, if you have any other ideas for things you might like to see on the channel or thoughts and ideas, any games you might like to talk about, please leave me a message in the comment section below. But until next time, I'm Craig Thompson with The Board Game Teacher saying thanks for coming to the classroom. Are you coming back to school with me?